why do we use speed of light when it's more like speed of causality? Yeah, because light came first. <laughs> so it's completely historical. This is an excellent question because the point of the question is we have this speed limit built into the universe, which we call the speed of light. It happens to be the speed at which light moves. So it's not wrong to call it the speed of light, in particular, the speed of light in vacuum. In air or water or glass, light moves more slowly than that. But the point is that it, it's more fundamental than just the speed of light. It's also the speed of gravitons, the speed of gravity, for example. And most importantly, it's just the cosmic speed limit. Particles that are not light or gravity, particles that are massive, can move more slowly than the speed of light, but never more rapidly. So influences, again, if I poke the universe right now, the influence from that poking, as far as we know, cannot travel faster than the speed of light. So the fact that it's the speed of causality, the speed of influence propagating through the universe, is indeed the important fact. But historically, before anyone was thinking that way, they were thinking about light, right? In the 1850s, 60s, 70s, Faraday and Maxwell and so forth were able to show that by combining the equations for electric, electric fields and magnetic fields and charged particles, they could figure out what light was, namely that it was a wave in the electromagnetic field and that it traveled at a speed that they could calculate, which is called the speed of light. It was only much later through Einstein and Poincaré and Minkowski and people like that, that we figured out that the speed of light was this speed of causality. And it is very, very often the case in science that once a name is chosen, the name sticks, even though it's not the best name you could imagine. Absolutely. Uh, Stuart Ralston has asked, why is the speed of light th about 300 uh, million meters per second? Uh, what determines that speed? Yeah, the speed of light is one, as I'm sure you know perfectly well, Alan. It is one light units, year per year. I hate those it units. Is one so light second per second. Uh, the question, so the point is that the, the given that the speed of light is the speed limit, is built into the fabric of space time. Um, the question is not why is the speed of light 300 million meters per second? The question is why do we use meters and seconds? <laughs> speed of light is the speed of light. It's, it's sort of something that supersedes uh, notions of units or anything like that. Um, the reason why we use meters per second is because you're approximately a meter or two tall. And if someone says, you know, move your hand, it takes you about a second to move it, right? These are very human length and time scales. And it's, if you want to dig into it, the interesting thing is that a meter is a very short amount of distance, cosmically speaking, and a second is a long period of time. Light moves a l much more than one meter in a second, it moves 300 million meters, right? So the physics question is, why is there this imbalance between the way we measure space and the way we measure time so that the speed of light looks so big to us? And the answer is, in the world in which we live, we're all slow pokes. We all move very slowly compared to the speed of light. Our natural reactions, the way that we think about the world, the speed of our cars and so forth, none of this is anywhere close to the speed of light. So to a very good approximation, we travel through time by a lot whenever we travel through space by a little. All right, nice. Um, Jonathan uh, Gunnell has asked uh, that he's read that photons uh, experience neither time nor distance. Is that true? And if so, how can they have wavelength? Good. So there's a whole bunch of things going on in that very short question. One thing is, it's a little bit illegitimate to talk about photons and wavelengths. I know everyone does it. I do it. But wavelengths belong to waves and particles, and photons are particles, right? And the relationship is you have a quantum mechanical electromagnetic wave that exists. And when you observe it, the quantum mechanics kicks in and you see particles. But the thing that is traveling through space is not really a particle, it's a vibration in a wave. That's one fact. The other fact is, you know, guess what? Photons don't experience anything. <laughs> They're elementary particles. Photons do not have rich inner lives, okay? So the, there's a technical fact that we translate into loose natural language. The technical fact is that there is a way of measuring distances in space-time and intervals. So intervals of time, 
distances in space. And the way that works out in space-time is that the curve along which a photon travels has zero space-time interval, okay? So if you could talk about it experiencing time, it would experience zero time. And when you say to a physicist, a photon experiences zero time, they know what you mean, okay? But it's not like there's a conscious photon and it just experiences the whole universe all at the same time. It's, it's, just, it's just not like that. It's just that, you know, the photon moves from our perspective, but there's no such thing as a clock carried by a photon. That clock would not move. It would not actually be any different from one moment to another. That's the idea that as, as you go faster, your uh, time ticks more slowly relative to an observer at rest. And so you're so I think that's where the the experiential question comes in because we can imagine ourselves traveling off to Alpha Centauri at great speed and the journey feels like it was only a few days if we were able to go fast enough, right? Yeah, you know, I, I really I try to be careful about this. I don't always succeed. I do not like to talk about clocks or time flowing at different rates because from your perspective on that journey to Alpha Centauri, every time you look at your clock, it's ticking at one second per second, okay? Right, yeah. The time that you feel never feels like it's speeding up or slowing down. As you said correctly, when you compare it somehow to what is observed by someone who's moving in a different way through the universe, they can have experienced a different amount of time. And the rule is that the people who stay behind and don't move experience the most time between any two events. So it's almost irresistible to say that time slows down when you move close to the speed of light. But you know that Einstein taught you there's no such thing in any absolute sense as moving close to the speed of light. All speeds are created equal in relativity. The correct thing to say is that the journey you take by zooming out to Alpha Centauri and zooming back will have less total duration as measured by a watch than one where you just stay home on Earth.